Hey everybody, I wanted to give a description of the minimum vertex cover problem in a graph. This is an integer um, program where you can um, approximate the solution via a linear program relaxation. Okay, so capital G is our graph drawn here. It has a vertex set, capital V, and you know all of these points are the vertices. And then it has an edge set, capital E, and all of these are the edges. So in the minimum vertex cover problem, what we're trying to do is we're trying to find a collection of vertices, I'll call it S, it's a subset of our vertex set where every edge is adjacent to at least one vertex in our set S. So let's try to find um, a possible vertex subset S. You could take all of the vertices, and then certainly if you take all of the vertices, every edge is adjacent to at least one of those vertices, but we're trying to find the minimum vertex cover. Okay, let's just try to find one by hand. I won't claim to find the optimal um, vertex cover, but let's just, um, um, uh, let's try to do a reasonably small cover. So let's say I take this first vertex. That means all of the adjacent edges are handled. So I'm just gonna cross out those edges. Um, let's see, looking here, this edge, since this edge has not been covered, I'm gonna need to choose eventually one of the two vertices. Um, why don't we just choose the top one? Okay, so let's add this vertex to our set S. So that covers this edge, this edge, and this edge. Um, this edge is now handled twice, but who cares? We just need to make sure that every edge is handled at least once. Over on the left side of the diagram, I think I'm gonna to need to select two of these three vertices to cover the edges. So I might as well select this one because I get that edge as well. And then why don't I select this vertex, which covers that edge. Let's keep going. Maybe I'll select this vertex to cover that edge and that edge. And I'm getting there. Maybe I'll select this vertex. So I cover those two edges. And finally, I can select this vertex to cover those two edges. So you can see that all of the edges are covered by at least one adjacent vertex. So let me erase all of our, whoops. Let me erase all of the scratch work on the edges. And, and what we're left is, what we're left with is a valid vertex cover. So this subset of vertices, capital S, could be these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven vertices that I've drawn in blue. Those seven vertices suffice as a vertex cover because every edge is adjacent to at least one of those vertices. Okay, so let's, um, um, describe this now as an integer programming problem, integer linear programming problem. It's gonna be a linear programming problem, but furthermore, we'll specify that the variables have to be integers. Okay, so x sub v is gonna be a variable associated to each vertex little v, which is zero if it's not in our set, our cover, and it's one if it is. So we're trying to minimize the number of vertices in the cover, which means we're trying to minimize the number of vertices that are that obtain the value one. That's equal to the sum right here, the number of vertices in our cover. Subject to the linear constraint that for any edge going between vertices u and v, at least one of those vertices u or v has to be in our cover. So you can write that by saying that the sum of xu plus xv has to be at least one. 
because at least one of those variables better be one. Otherwise, this edge is not covered. All right, so we have a linear, uh, a linear optimization function. We have a linear uh, constraint and inequality. And then we furthermore have this requirement that our um, variables are integers, in particular, either 0 or 1. And that's why this is an integer linear programming problem. It's been proven that solving this problem is NP hard in general. So for a general graph, you expect it to, to be hard to find the optimal vertex cover. This is considered a, a medium hard energy or linear programming problem in the sense that we'll find an, an efficient way to find an approximate solution, an approximate optimal solution, I should say. It won't be necessarily optimal, but it'll be optimal within a, a factor of two. So let me write here LP for linear program, and in particular, the LP relaxation. So all we're going to do is we're going to relax this integrality constraint. And so this integrality constraint is going to instead be that each variable x sub v associated to a vertex little v is not necessarily the integer 0 or 1, but it's any real number between 0 and 1. So the linear programming relaxation is what I get when I replace um, the constraint up above requiring integer variables with this constraint down below, allowing any real numbers as my variables. I want to give the, um, from a high level, I want to give the argument for why solving the linear program relaxation, which you could do very efficiently using the simplex method, gives you a solution that's not necessarily optimal, but is optimal within a factor of two. So let SIP be a vertex cover that gives an optimal solution to the integer programming problem. We don't know what, what SIP is, but we're still going to work with it theoretically. Let SLP be a vertex cover that, that solves the the linear program relaxation, OK? This one we can compute using the simplex algorithm. And once you do the simplex algorithm, you obtain variables x sub v solving this linear relaxation. But those, those variables might be any real number between 0 and 1. So how do you decide if you want to include a, a particular vertex whose value is 0.33333, how do you decide if you want to include that in a cover or not? How are we, how are we going to make a cover from that data? We're, we're going to make a, a valid vertex cover by including a vertex, little v, if its value is at least 1 half. OK, so we almost just round. <laughs> you know, we, we might have, when we solve that linear program relaxation, we might get these values like 0.33 and then 0.7 and then 0.9. And then we just round. We round 0.33 down, so this vertex is not in our cover. We round 0.7 up, so this vertex is in our cover. And we round 0.9 up, so this vertex would be in our cover, etc. All right. Um, let's see. It's worth remarking, why does this set SLP, why does this set of vertices cover all of our edges? Well, on each edge, we have this constraint. So XU plus XV has to be at least one. That implies that at least one of XU or XV is at least one half, right? At least one of them has to be at least one half if the sum of two numbers is equal to one. So that means that under this rounding, at least one of those xus or xvs was at least one half. So we rounded up and included that vertex in our therefore valid cover SLP. 
Okay. So the fact that I want to argue here is that the number of vertices we found by solving a linear program and then rounding is bounded within a factor of two of the number of vertices that are optimal for the integer program. That's NP hard to solve exactly. So this, this first equality inequality is clear. Just because, um, um, you know, when I find this set SLP after rounding, right, I found a feasible solution to the integer program. And SIP is an optimal solution to the integer program. So that explains this inequality. An optimal solution minimizing something is less than or equal to any feasible solution. And now I want to argue why the second inequality is true. This is the less obvious inequality, it's still true, but I wanna argue why our procedure of solving the linear program relaxation and then rounding to get our cover SLP is optimal within a factor of two of the true integer programming solution. Okay, so I've broken this proof up into steps. So how many vertices do I have in this set SLP? Well, I'm claiming that it's at most twice times the sum over all vertices, little v, of the um, the not necessarily integer value of that variable in the LP relaxation. Okay, the reason why is to 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 see this inequality, I don't need to sum over all the vertices. I could just sum over all the vertices in the set SLP. And the reason being is in the set SLP, each vertex in that set has value at least one half. So if I double that, twice times one half is at least one. So the number of vertices in the set SLP is, you know, is uh, less than or equal to twice one half when I even just sum over the vertices in, in SLP. Okay, so this is by the definition of our set SLP. Even if I just summed over the set SLP, I would have um, that number of vertices with um, real numbers at least one half. When I double that, I, I get the number of vertices in SLP at least. And then when I sum over even more vertices, it can only get larger. Not sure how well I explained that, but that's okay. <laughs> So now let me explain this inequality. I'm going to let xv tilde denote the value either 0 or 1 in an optimal solution to the integer programming problem. So xv tilde is this value solving the integer programming problem, whereas xv was this value when I just solved the LP relaxation. OK, but a solution, um, let me say it this way, a solution to the integer programming problem, a valid solution, is always a valid feasible solution for the linear programming problem, right? So this is since any solution to the integer program is also a you know feasible solution to the linear programming relaxation. So here on the right, I have a feasible solution to the LP relaxation. Here on the left, I have an optimal solution. And an optimal solution in a minimization problem is always less than or equal to a feasible solution. All right, and now this is just, um, you know, all these variables x b tilde are either zero or one. So when I sum over them, I just get the number of vertices in my uh, vertex cover when I solve the integer program. 
So that proof was explaining this inequality. The moral of the story is that sometimes solving an, a linear programming relaxation can give you a quite good approximate solution to an otherwise NP-hard problem. I mean, it still is an NP-hard integer problem, but here we have very fast algorithms, the simplex method for approximating it within a factor of two. All right, so uh, thanks for your time and attention, and I hope you enjoyed this uh, short video on minimum vertex covers and the associated integer and arbitrary linear programs associated with them. Thanks.